MCB Base Meets brings young Africans from all over the continent together in one room with some of the most powerful people in the world. Today, we're sitting down with Sudanese-born entrepreneur and philanthropist Mr. Mo Ibrahim, a guy who's made billions from starting Celtel and is now spending some of those billions on making Africa a better place through the Mo Ibrahim Foundation. Let's meet the change makers that will be asking him all the questions. My name is Aya Shebi. I'm from Tunisia. And currently, I'm a full-time Pan-Africanist. I love the philanthropist and Mo Ibrahim. The way he could mobilize everybody at the center of speaking about governance. Globally, we're having a governance crisis. Everyone, no matter where you're from, is looking at leaders with mistrust and fear. I mean, one of the world's superpowers has a reality star as a president. Today, we're at the Mo Ibrahim Foundation's Governance Weekend in Marrakesh, figuring out what good governance means to us, the everyday African. And by good governance, we mean leaders who have our backs. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, joined on stage by a group of young people, panelists, as we call them, for interview-based meets. And this time, our special guest, is Mr. Mo Ibrahim. How's it going, doctor? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. I think maybe just to get to know you first, if we had to relive one moment in history, what moment would that be? Not necessarily one that you were present for, but if you could be infused into that moment. Uh, maybe the day they finished building the pyramids. OK. Mm. What's uh, the most extravagant thing you spent money on? Uh, the boat. Would you say you're an introvert or an extrovert? In between, maybe. Yeah. Shay or Mandela? Mandela. Oh, man. OK. Uh, what's your favorite MTV show? Uh, <laughs> beside MTV, <laughs> I, 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 I like the uh, Oh, OK, good. Yeah. Kanye West or Jay-Z? I prefer the wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually hilarious. <laughs> so basically saying Kim or Beyonce then? Uh, Beyonce then. OK. It is Tunisians who made social media a tool for social change. When I was 23 years old in 2011, uh, 23 years old in Germany might be traveling the world and volunteering somewhere or having an internship, but we were facing tear gas and we were rising up for something that we didn't know if we we're gonna win that battle or not, but we did. Uh, when the revolution started in Tunisia at first, uh, we didn't have the support of the international community. But because we got our stories out, we made the news until we became the news. And then international media had to pick many of the footage and the blogging that we did. When I visited the US the first time, I was so surprised of people knowing very few about Tunisia's politics, even after the revolution. And I started a blog to inform people about us and change the narrative about what's happening. But how do we do that on a massive level? Considering America, you should not be surprised. Actually, very few Americans know about American mm -hmm. politics, <laughs> in a way. Change identity by, by realizing, like we're having tonight a concert in Marrakesh, but we have musicians from South Africa, musicians from Mali. We're having a football match. We bring in the Congolese to play the, the Moroccans. Mm -hmm. This is what reduce our African identity, when we start to sing each other's songs, learn uh, yeah. each other rhythm and poetry, uh, we mix. Then we realize we're all brothers and sisters, and it's wonderful to have this diversity in Africa. So this, all the things which brings out our humanity and erase the borders between us, it brings us together. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, I think, is, is wonderful. So with the artists, you also, tra you also succeeded to mobilize respected figures and celebrities like Grisha Michelle and Bono and uh, Jane Naidoo and Kofi Annan. So we, what we're trying to do also as young people of this generation is to mobilize young people around a Pan-African vision. How can we learn from your experience? We need to work together, all of you. Is it about how to learn to work together? Mm -hmm. And uh, because alone, we're weak, we're nobody. But together, we are a movement. I lead a movement called Africa Youth Movement. What we do is we empower young people to be at the forefront of influencing uh, peace building, governance, agriculture, uh, transparency, accountability, and all sorts of issues. So we ask the member, what do you need? And then they tell us. Um, so for example, in the recent um, 
Cameroonian case where we had members who had internet shut down completely for about more than two months now uh, in the Anglophone areas. And we just asked the member, what do you want? What kind of narrative you want to get out? Uh, and the mainstream media is not covering it. So we, we don't have any, um, they don't have any internet connection, so we call by phone. They try to go to other cities to connect. We get footage from them. We get some interviews and we try to get that out to the world. Um, and try to amplify those voices. Uh, this is uh, Banla Sam, um, from the northwest region of Cameroon. Uh, a lot of uh, brutalization of uh, anglophones. So today, youth are using the power of internet, uh, social media, technology to make social change and social impact. However, 60% of the population of the world is offline and most of them are in Africa. Sure. So most of young people don't have access to internet, and if they do, they live under the rule of bad governance. So it's either mm. the cyberspace is censored or the internet shut down for months. So what do we do about that? How do we get young people to access equal opportunities on the internet and to get access to information? Right, you, there are two sides to your question. The first one, really we need to continue to build infrastructure. By building infrastructure is not just roads and ports and uh, it's also broadband and uh, I was amazed about uh, the lack of interest from all the big internet companies whether it is Google or Facebook or Microsoft how much they invested in the broadband infrastructure in Africa and uh, uh, it's not fair I think they need to put their hand in their pockets build the infrastructure because they're going to reap the benefits of that. That's a very valid investment for them, and I'm surprised mm -hmm. about how lazy they are. The other thing about governments which shut down the internet, and I have an example in Cameroon Cameroon's now, yeah. they shut it. I mean, this is, this is this despicable. And uh, it all goes back to what we've been fighting for, which is good governance. We need governments which come to serve the people, not to make life awful for their own people. I mean, it's amazing how, how some of our dictators and uh, those long-serving presidents, you know, who have presidents who have been there for, for before you were born, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think our generation is the most innovative generation in human history. Well, I think social media has definitely revolutionized how we engage politically as young people. Um, it's enabled us to speak tr truth to power in different mediums. There are a lot going on in Africa. Just right after Tunisia, uh, Yonamar movement in Senegal started to protest. Uh, the Burkina Bay youth started and, and they did the revolution. Uh, the, the student movement in South Africa. So it really swept all over the continent. And I think more and more we're gaining our voice and we're proud to speak up, speak up for change. and speak up for things to be right. This is a global issue. This is about girls, this is about education, this is about terrorism, this is about young people. This is about what this whole conference should be about. And nobody is talking about it. I, I definitely, that's a very important tool of protest. And that's why people are shutting the internet mm -hmm. to, to, to clamp down on protest, obviously. Mm. Look, what you're doing really is that is, is you are silencing the people. Mm -hmm. That's not fine. And don't forget, there are a lot of businesses depend on the internet, forget about politics, even business. Those guys looting their livelihood because they cannot use the internet. So this, in my view, is criminal. I think our generation is bringing new ways of activism, uh, a lot through art, a lot through innovation. This is an opportunity to be politically engaged, to speak in a way that they probably wouldn't have in the past. Be the change you want to see in the world. The world isn't built by one person. Everybody uh, is rising up for their rights if they realize everybody is a citizen and they have the responsibility to do it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much. Wonderful. Thank you. There's a mantra that says, behind every great man, there's an even greater woman. I'm curious to know what woman has had the most profound impact on your life, how and why? Yeah, I don't like that thing because <laughs> it always puts women behind men. Yeah. Maybe we should start to put mm. women in um, front mm. of men, so I'm abstaining. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very smart answer. <laughs>